What is up YouTube? We have another video for you guys today and today we're going to be talking about our NBA Eastern Conference playoff prediction for the 2017-2018 NBA season. If you want to see the rest of my list, that will be in the comment section down below. So keep your eyes on the comment section and you'll see what I believe to be the rest of the East. And stay tuned for my next video where I'll be talking about the Western Conference. So yeah, enough of the chit chat, let's get right into this video. The Charlotte Hornets is a definition of an of a underrated team. I truly believe, I'm surprised that people don't have this team in the playoffs. If you look at the roster, Kemba Walker, an underrated point guard in this league. Jeremy Lamb, after OKC, was kind of forgotten. People remember, remember him as a guy that was traded for James Harden. That's, that's all they remember him for, but he still got game. Michael Kilgill, Chris, uh, okay, he's not that great in my opinion. Plays defense, though, top-notch defense. So, and his shot is getting better and better each year, so that's good to see. Dwight Howard, uh, another guy who was a Hall of Famer yet gets no respect and was traded for basically nothing. And he's a guy that can still give you 10 and 10 every game. And Marvin Williams, a veteran guy as well, can shoot those threes at times and just plays top-notch defense. And of course, Malik Monk, a very young, promising rookie that I really, really like. But the only problem that's holding the team back a lot is the fact that Nicholas Batum probably won't be seen for quite some time. That's going to really put a hole in their small four position. Yeah, that's real, that's a real concern about the team is how fast you can get Batum in it. But the moment they get Batum, don't be surprised if the team gets on a couple of wins tricky in there. And of course, another underrated pickup for their backup point guard position is, is Michael Carter-Williams because basically the team was revolved around Kemba Walker. And with having Michael Carter-Williams there, it's going to take a lot of strain off of Kemba and all the team to play it more as a unit. And that's why I believe this team is no doubt an eight-seeded team. Now we got the Detroit Pistons for the seventh seed. I believe the Detroit Pistons is a, a very underrated team as well. People don't understand that Reggie Jackson was actually injured throughout throughout most of the season last year, and I think this is the year when Reggie Jackson is going to feel like he's a forgotten man. He's going to prove himself what he's all about and definitely play great. And picking up A.V. Bradley, arguably one of the best two-way players in the league, is definitely going to be able to be have doesn't have to worry that much on defense because Isaiah Thomas kind of forced him to play a lot of extra defense and a lot of help defense and overall Avery Bradley was also snubbed for the all defensive team so I'm thinking Avery Bradley is out there pretty a little salty and the fact that the Celtics just let him go like that Avery Bradley is out here to have a lot to prove and of course Tobias Harris, Tobias Harris is a really good player as well and so is Andre Drummond showcasing us that he actually has a decent jump shot and overall they're benching Ishmith and all those guys out there I think this team is definitely deep enough to probably land himself a pretty solid seven seed in the Eastern Conference now we have the six seeded Miami Heat's team I truly think this team is definitely going to be a lot better last year towards the second half of the season the Miami Heat suddenly got on fire I don't know what happened to them they probably just woke up or Deion Waiter got a lot of confidence in himself, and overall the team went on a tear. And I truly think it's going to continue now. Hassan Whiteside is definitely looking going to be a lot better. They picked up a young, promising rookie in Bam Adubayo, Ad Ad who looks like he's going to be a solid guy to come off the bench as well at the center position, or maybe even find his way in a starting lineup. Who knows? And they also have Goran Dragic, who's definitely a very top-tier point guard. And of course, like I said, Deion Waiters, and of course, the rest of their bench is looking solid and picking up Kelly Olynyk to beef, beef up their bench. Man, this team is going to look like a team that doesn't need any star potential. It's all about team play. And that is why this team is going to be finding its way in the sixth seed in the Eastern Conference. The fifth seeded Toronto Raptors. Overall, this team, I know it can be pretty damn awful in the playoffs, especially but that doesn't matter is they still have two all-stars on the team with Kyle Lowry and DeMar DeRozan, and that's all they really need. And I would consider Serge Ibaka a half a star if you really want to count that, because Serge Ibaka is still one of the best 3 and D power forwards in the league. He plays defense in the paint and goes out there and stretches the floor for you. Kyle Lowry, of course, is going to do his thing, probably become an all-star somehow again. Still a good defensive player, a defensive point guard, and can still score points in, in bunches. And DeMar DeRozan, easily one of the best scoring shooting guards in the league. 
I mean, you got James Harden to argue with, but overall, one of the best scorers in the league we got. Without, He doesn't even need to shoot threes, and he's still scoring like 28 a game. So DeMar DeRozan, of course, is going to be out there hitting those mid-range shots and finishing near the rim and getting to the free throw line. And definitely with a new acquisition of CJ and Miles, who's going to space the floor for them. And a promising player, Norman Powell, who can possibly become a most improved player. So yeah, ultimately, I see this team as a fifth seed. And yeah, that's what I believe with, the, with, the, with this team here. The Toronto Raptors are a fifth seeded team. Milwaukee Bucks. Overall, this team is definitely a great team on paper. With their starting lineup filled with Giannis Atkakempo, Marco Brogdon, Chris Middleton, possibly Thon and Maker, and he got Jabari Parker, which I still believe there's a lot of questions surrounding around him. I do believe he's an, he most likely would get traded if there's anybody in this roster that will be traded. I know he's a star player that can drop 20 and 8 and 20 and 8 for the entire season. But the problem is if he's going to play an entire season. That is the reason why I don't believe this team may go as farther than the fourth seed. Because Jabari Parker is a chunk of their scoring. 20 points just wiped off due to maybe a third ACL tear, which really sucked. But overall, the team has a nice deep bench with Tony Snell off the bench. Um, Matthew Della Dova, guys like that. Gerald Green, who could probably come back again. Greg Monroe, don't forget, this guy still can ball out. And you got Jason. Man, there's so many good guys on this bench, man. I'm telling you right now. That's why I believe this team is at number four. Now, let's not forget. Oh, I forgot to mention John Henson and Mirzat Talenovic. Those guys are just. One is just a really good big man that can defend, and one is a really good, well, really decent shooter. So, yeah, I believe this team is at number four for the third seed. I don't believe this team is going to go anywhere lower than third seed. Now, the reason why I believe this team is very great is, well, look at their backcourt. Bradley Bill and John Wall. Easily one of the best backcourts in the entire league. And that alone could just carry them to the top five seed in the Eastern Conference. But when you look at the rest of the roster, Otto Porter Jr., who just got a nice payday last season, um, this offseason, mean that this guy's going to have to prove himself. And he's definitely a good 3 and D small forward guy that can shoot the lights out, especially with John Wall facilitating for the team. And you got more Gortat, still a veteran, experienced guy. And overall, just a solid team that hasn't really gotten through a lot of changes. A nice bench player with Marquise Morris. Overall, this team has, they really know each other very well. Don't forget Kelly Oubre Jr. This team is just a team that's well established. They didn't make a lot of major moves, meaning that these team, this, these players in this roster, they all understand each other very well, and they're going to be doing great right out, of, right out of the gates. I'm telling you right now, this team's going to be winning games really early too. So watch out for the Washington Wizards at number three in the Eastern Conference. I know, I know what you're about to say. How can the Boston Celtics be number two when last year they were number one and supposedly the Eastern Conference got worse and also the Celtics I guess got better if you really want to say it but in my opinion I don't think the Celtics actually got better what they did was add a lot of new players into the team that kind of messed a lot messed up a lot with their chemistry Gordon Haywood is a new player to the team you got Kyrie Irving as well a new player and a new a new rookie that's looking promising and Jason Tatum just a lot of a lot of moves they did in the summer and sometimes that can make you it's not really good to just go around shuffling your roster up like that I believe the only players that they had last year was Al Horford Jalen Brown and Marcus Smart literally that's it and what you need is some sort of chemistry and understanding of each other for you to get pretty far. And that is what the Washington Celtics is really struggling with at the moment. Currently, especially when you lose your best player in your team, the guy that your offense was basically designed around and your team was designed around. And losing defenders like um, Avery Bradley and Jay Crowder is definitely going to hurt because this team is still struggling with defense. And, and still, they're struggling with interior defense, and of course, they're also struggling with rebounding. And Al Hofford is currently their center. I don't like Al Hofford as center. I truly believe he should be a, a power forward at the very least. I just don't like that about, about Al Hofford. I truly think that he's not a defying center. But overall, this team has a lot of potential. As of right now, this team is still in the part where they're in the form of molding into a maybe a championship team. But at the moment, Kyrie Irving is a good scorer, but that's pretty much it. Gordon A was a nice versatile small four, but that's pretty much it for now. But this team is definitely in the right position to be successful in the future. So yes, Boston Celtics are going to be a number two seed. Well, the number two seed. Okay, okay, I'm tired of this narrative I'm seeing from everyone saying that LeBron James is 
regular season he coasts he sits back and chills and he what what is this where is this i want to know where it's just coming from what do you mean that a player is going to spend 82 games not going going ham or or, or just relaxing but overall even if lebron is supposedly going to be coasting the regular season if you look at the rest of the roster from last year and this year last year they were just lebron james and a bunch of shooters that, that's what the team was but this year, they added a lot of new, great players that can actually help the team in many ways. Now, Dwayne Wade is a guy that can actually do a lot more than just shoot, catch and shoot threes like J.R. Smith. He can actually dribble the ball, make plays on his own, play defense as well, and do all these kind of great things in many ways and create his own shot. That's a good thing, meaning a lot less ball handling for LeBron James. And also, Derrick Rose can do the exact same thing. He's not really a catch and shoot player. He's a guy, a secondary ball handler for LeBron James. And supposedly this summer... There's a lot of rumors of Derrick Rose actually making extremely great plays, and even the coaches are surprised to see that. And Jose Calderon, another playmaker that's proven to actually shoot threes as well. And let's not forget Isaiah Thomas will make his way into the season halfway, halfway, probably halfway or whenever he's healthy. It doesn't even matter if he doesn't show up in maybe even two, three months towards the end of the season. It doesn't truly matter because overall the team added two 20 points per, 20 points per game score in, in Derrick Rose and Dwayne Wade. So, And of course, Kevin Love is also part of the team if people forgot this guy is still a great player Tristan Thompson coming off the bench and just Channing Fry, a nice veteran three-point shooter and Jay Crowder as well a two-way guy that can actually score threes and he shot very well from downtown man I don't think I have to explain why the Cavaliers is clearly a number one seed team in the Eastern Conference if LeBron or James rest they have D- Dwayne Wade if, if, Der- if Dwayne Wade is resting they have Derrick Rose if Derrick Rose rest Isaiah Thomas could possibly find his way to be it just so much it's just the team is just so deep that even if three of the stars rest they can probably pull a win that's what I really believe if three of the stars can actually get out the game they have enough depth to actually win games so yeah I believe the Cavaliers is no doubt a number one seeded team even if LeBron sits out 20 games so yeah that's what I say the Cavaliers are a number one seeded team